Hi guys, it's been about three months since I did my last tutorial, so apologies for the long delay guys. But as you can see, I have in front of me a completed Chaos Corn Land Raider. And we're going to be painting it from start to finish. But first of all, I want to say a huge thank you to my new YouTube channel sponsors, Stronghold Games in Hull. I also want to thank uh, Brian Ross who actually purchased the Land Raider that I'm going to be painting up for his new World Eaters army. As you can see it's got upgraded doors on this tank. So guys, uh, as usual, um, it's been a long time so I'm sure you're all really thirsty. Go grab yourselves an ice hot drink or maybe an ice cold beer and we'll get started with the tutorial. We're going to start off by priming the Land Raid with Alclad 2's Lacquer Primer White. It's very important to note that you need to be well ventilated, um, wearing a respirator if you're using this stuff. Uh, it's really horrible if inhaled and also on top of that you need to have a good quality airbrush with PTF uh, E solvent packing seals. I've got an Awata Eclipse CS airbrush which is absolutely fine to use our clads with so just make sure that uh, your airbrush is suitable for these type of paints if you are going to use them. If you can't use Alclad primers, then the next best thing I probably think is Badger Steinol Res primers, which you can use in any airbrush. Here I'm priming at about 20 psi, and I'm working at about three to four inches away from the model, and I'm pulling slowly back on the airbrush trigger just to get a nice fine mist of uh, the Alclad white primer on the Land Raider. Now we're going to do a technique called pre-shading. What that means is we're going to go all around the surface area of the tank and we're going to aim for all of the recesses of all the panel lines on the tank and we're going to just get a nice smooth, even as we possibly can, uh, airbrush lines with the Vallejo Game Air Charred Brown. If you're new to airbrushing, this is a great technique to use to learn uh, hand-to-eye coordination because you're actually trying to find where all the panel lines begin and end. It's also really um, important to note, guys, that you don't have to be an expert with the airbrush to do this technique at all because when we lay down the base coat, we can show as little or as much as the pre-shading as we like by how thick we lay down our base layer. So if you feel that you've gone a little bit haywire, you can do one of two things. You can come back in with a white paint and clear up some of the untidy lines or you can lay down the base layer which is going to be a red in our case because it's going to be a cornland raider and you can feather out the uh, unwanted lines by laying down the base layer a little thicker as you can see guys it takes no time at all to pre-shade the tank but it's a really fun to do with the airbrush so I uh, highly recommend this technique and uh, yeah so we'll just crack on with the pre-shading throughout the tank and then we'll start base coating over the pre-shading work
Okay, here's what the tank looks like after everything's been pre-shaded all throughout the tank. As you can see, I've gone around all the panel lines and we've added that charred brown color, which is going to show through the base paint lay layer of red uh, shortly. And uh, it's gonna look really nice with that deep shading from underneath. Now we're going to add our base layer using Vallejo Model Air Ferrari Red. As you can see, I'm just testing the paint on a little bit of paper off to the side of the camera just to make sure it was flowing nicely. And now I'm laying down the paint nice and thin onto the tank. It's much better to actually do the base layer in two passes. So you lay down a really thin layer and then you come back over and do another layer than doing it all in one thick heavy coat the reason we don't want to do it in one thick heavy coat is we'll probably be left with drip marks run marks that sort of thing on the tank and that's very undesirable so try and paint the base coat layer in two thin layers as opposed to one thick one Now we're going to do a technique similar to pre-shading, but this is called post-shading. And it's exactly as it sounds. We're going to shade over the base uh, layer with the charred brain, any areas that I don't think the shadow's deep enough. And also the very, very bottom fifth of the tank is getting really deep shading uh, where it's gonna represent uh, the ratio of shadow from the bottom of the tank to the top of the tank and also it will look nice once we add a nice feathered edged um, earth layer later on on the tank Now we're going to use enamel wash by MIG Ammo. It's a black wash and we're going to also use odorless thinner by AK Interactive. Enamel washes work a lot differently from acrylic washes. And in fact, in my personal opinion and in a lot of other uh, hobbyist opinions, it's way better than an acrylic wash. And the reason for that is that once um, the enamel wash as dried if you're left with any stains that are undesirable and you want to remove you can just dip your brush in the odorless thinner and you can mop away any excess wash that you don't want almost like a rubber 
Unlike acrylic washes, when they dry, you're left with the result for better or for worse. So uh, we're going to use the enamel wash because I think it's much better than an acrylic wash. Here you can see what the Land Raider looks like after I've gone round all the rivets, all the panel lines and we've literally pin washed, as the technique's called, all the vehicle with that enamel black wash. Now we're going to be using some blister pack foam that you get in some miniatures. We're going to be using Vallejo Game Air Charred Brown. It's important to note that once you're actually using the sponge, you remove most of the paint on some uh, paper towel and you 
very lightly dab on the surface of the miniature. These are not random chips, I'm literally going round all of the areas where I think natural edges would be chipped and the tank would naturally form chips. So as you can see all of those extreme edges of the tank are getting chips and it's going to add another layer of depth to the vehicle. Now we're going to use charred brown again and this time we're actually using it to paint all of the tracks. It's important to note that whilst actually painting the tank tracks with the charred brown colour that you don't need to worry about overspray. The reason for this is it will look like muds actually started to accumulate on the tank so overspraying this instance is not going to be a problem on the tank at all. Now we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Silver and we're going to dry brush the tank tracks with the silver colour. I'm using a medium dry brush here from the Army Painter and as you can see it's a flat headed bristle brush. It's really important that you don't use your normal round headed bristle brushes for this job as it will ruin the brushes uh, quicker than uh, you can think. So uh, using the correct brush will give you a really nice uh, detail to the edges of the tank tracks.
Now we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Earth and we're going to start feathering in some of that earth colour towards the bottom third of the tank and it's going to add another level of depth to the tank, another colour and uh, the dirt layer will look really nice against the red. Now we're going to use my favourite acrylic metallic paints. We're using Vallejo Metal Colour, Airbrush Colours, Gunmetal Grey. This paint is specifically designed for airbrushes, but don't let that fool you. You can actually hand brush these on to any part of a model and you'll get pretty much one coat coverage. I really wanted the metallics to be super dark so I added a couple of drops of an acrylic black paint to the gunmetal grey colour and it's given it a really nice dark tone. Now we're going to paint using Vallejo Metal Colours Copper and as you can see it works just as well as the Gunmetal Grey giving pretty much one coat coverage on all the areas that are due to be painted in the copper colour. So that's all of the iconography on the tank.
I haven't mentioned it so far but you notice that the tanks got chains and schools well I added the chains using green stuff worlds chains that they sell on their web store and the schools are also from green stuff world and they're from games workshop schools box set but I just literally clipped the chain off I wrapped it round some hooks and then glued on the schools I think this is a really nice touch as opposed to the spikes which I really think look a bit tacky on the Chaos Land Raiders so we didn't add the uh, spikes and we went with schools and chains instead but here you can just see that I'm adding the Zandri dust from uh, Games Workshop to all the schools on the tank Now we're going to wash all of the metallics using Games Workshop's Agrax Earthshade. All of the schools on the tank are going to be washed with Games Workshop's shape Seraphim Sepia.
after the wash had dried on the schools, we're coming in with Games Workshop's dry paint, rack white. As you can see, I've removed all the paint from the brush pretty much, and we're just catching all of those extreme edges of the schools, which is going to highlight them and make them pop. Now we're going to start using Vallejo Game Air Silver and we're going to start dry brushing all of the metallics that we painted earlier. I'm using a small dry brush here and I'm just ever so slightly just going backwards and forwards on all of the metallics that we've painted on the tank. Now we're going to add some OSL or object source lighting and we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue. We're going to add the paint by aiming very very closely about an inch away or maybe even less than that on the very very center of those lights and then we're going to bleed by pulling back slightly further away from the tank with the airbrush and it will leave a slightly feathered edge which will leave it looking like natural light has formed from the lights. Here you can see that I'm adding some acrylic black paint. It doesn't matter which it is. I'm using Vallejo Game Air Black, but it could be any black acrylic paint. And I'm just getting a really nice finish to the tops of those exhaust pipes to get a smoke effect. And here we have our finished Land Raider. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial guys and if you do hit the like button or even better still actually leave a comment and let me know what you think of the tank. Lastly I want to thank Brian Ross who sent me the tank uh, out to complete for his uh, World Eaters and I also want to thank the great team over at Stronghold Games in Hull.
So guys, uh, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and I'll catch you in the next one.